Hey, how are you guys all doing? Uh, today I'm really excited about this video because today I'm gonna do something that I've wanted to do since the start of my YouTube channel. It was like the first video I kind of wanted to make when I started taking my YouTube channel a bit more seriously. I've kind of put it off but now I have a few ideas for it and it's gonna be as uh, I'm sure you saw in the title I'm gonna do a complete Rogue tutorial. I've been playing Rogue for for maybe three years. Uh, I mostly do 1v1. My knowledge in team PvP is not the best uh, but in terms of a Rogue and a Rogue's role in team PvP as well as uh, especially solo PvP like 1v1 I can say that I'm definitely a credible source uh, given my experience with the class. So I'm going to break down the video into, uh, into a couple of parts. So the first one is going to be gear. Then I'm going to talk about variants. Then I'm going to talk about like general play style. And the last part is going to be finishers. Like, uh, like one shot, which is something that uh, rogues are popular for. Like uh, ending your enemy in one move, right? So let's just get, it, get into it. Let's go. So the first thing is just going to be gear. So uh, with gear, rogue's a bit different to other classes because you might have to prioritize some things that you don't uh, necessarily have to prioritize with other classes, namely initiative. I think uh, in terms of uh, one versus one, initiative is one of the most important things you can have on a fight and it can definitely be like a game determining uh, uh, criteria. So whenever I make a set, I try and have at least 3,000 initiative, o over 3,500 is good, and always have the option to increase your initiative. Uh, whether via trophy, or you can have like a mount that gives 1,000 uh, 1, initiative, right? So the first criteria is you have to have high initiative. I'd say on Rogue, you don't need that much resistance. Uh, you need a lot more uh, vitality though. So typically if I'm building a set for 1v1, I'll try to have as much, around 5k vitality. This set doesn't. I try to balance the res a little bit more on this set. But a typical good uh, rogue 1 versus 1 set will have around 5k vitality. Uh, this is because your bomb's uh, health is dependent on yours. It's around 20%, not exactly, but it's around 20%. So if you can have 5k, then your bombs will have around uh, 1000 HP, which helps. The reason you don't need a lot of uh, resistance on Rogue is if you play well with your bombs, which we'll talk about later, uh, your bombs will be taking some of the hits for you. So you don't really need uh, to tank that much since your enemies have to spend some of their AP hitting your bombs or they'll be killed within a few turns, right? So that's something you definitely need. You need uh, initiative, you need HP. Now, you also need six range. This is a uh, this is non-negotiable. You definitely need six range. It can come in such use in, in a pinch, like in a situation where you really need that one range, you will really regret your life if you choose a set with five range. Always make sure you have that six range on your set. Dirty trick, fuse, maybe you need to delock an ivory from far away with, with uh, cadence, uh, powder, there are all, all these different things. And like I'm not playing kickback or magnet right now, but those sets are range modified. I mean, those variants are range modifiable as well. And you're definitely going to want six range. The other thing you're also going to want is two summons. Uh, the reason you're going to want two summons is because uh, Boom Bot and Walking Bomb both count as a summon. And sometimes you're going to need to put both of them in one turn. For example, obviously I'm going to be able to do this turn a little bit differently. But let's say, let's say for some reason, just given the way the MP was set up and everything, this is the only way I can put my target in the bomb. So I have to do this. Okay, I'm going to put boom bot, walking bomb, dirty trick, right? Okay, and open up the line. And then with my boom bot, bring him in. Obviously, I could have done that differently. But I'm saying in like some situations, that's the only way you can really do it. And you're going to need those two summons since they both count as summons. And without the two, you won't be able to place uh, one of them. So now we're at... High initiative, high vitality, you're going to need 6 range, 2 summons, resistance you don't need that much, and the last thing you're going to need is damage. So the way you want to look on damage when it comes to your sets, obviously high intelligence is important, but the way the formula works for bomb line damage uh, means that it values uh, straight up damage, as in like fire damage or just regular damage, like such as the damage from an inky veil. It weighs it higher than intelligence. I can't tell you the exact ratio because it varies, like depending on the, on the combo, on the combo damage, like the percentage combo damage on the bomb. But for example, I would much rather have an ice dofus than maybe have like a, 
major brain box. Like, okay, maybe not the major brain box, because that's obviously since it gives the minus 200. But like, let's say this one. I'd much rather have the ice to than that, because the 25 damage is much more preferable. So I can't tell you how to set up all your sets, but I can give you a foundation that you can sort of uh, work around when it comes to intelligence sets. So what I do is I put the triple right needle because that gives me a lot of damage, a lot of intelligence, and most importantly gives me the MP which fle frees up a slot down here, which allows me to put like Ebony Dofus, for example, or Ice Dofus. So those three, and then the rest you can uh, mix up however you want. Corrupted Bow, that's essential. Stalax Shield, because uh, percent range damage is very important. And uh, this pet is the best pet you can have on an Intelligence Rogue. And obviously if you're playing Agility, you just use the Agility 1, right? 120 Agility and 20 uh, Fire Damage. So now let's just move on to Variants. So your Variant choice is going to strongly depend on the map. So if you're playing in Colo, in a map where there are a lot of corners, this is not a Colo map, but if this was, for example, then possibly I might want to use a Magnet, because if someone goes in a corner and... Uh, and I'm trying to move them away so I can put, for example, a bomb behind them. I can't, I can't do that with crossing, and if I don't have kickback, then I'm going to struggle. So let's say I'm not playing Magnet. The thing that you're always going to want to have at least one of is a spell that can move your opponent. So right now I'm using Stolen Goods because uh, typically I'd be using Crossing, Ruse, and Stolen Goods. That's my typical setup because uh, Ruse will help me move further. Uh, Ru uh, crossing will help me move my bombs. And uh, stolen goods will help me move my my opponent in the way that I want, right? So those three are a pretty good combination. I also play fuse because uh, with ruse and fuse I can get a lot of displacement for not a lot of AP. So now I just moved uh, six, six, yeah, I believe it's six or one, two, three, four, five. I moved five cells for like a two or three AP, right? And I think that's you know that's quite one of the good aspects of Rogue is our mobility, and I think Fuse allows us to do that uh, more easily. Another thing that you should look out for in your variants is make sure you have at least one uh, latent expo bomb. This is especially if you're playing with Fuse. I typically do the strength one since that's, not, since that's the one I use the least because I use the agility and the chance one for my Kaboom boost. So I put this one as a latent expo bomb. Why do you want it as a latent expo bomb? Because it's 2 AP instead of 3 and it can allow it to easily set up a ruse next turn. For example, I do this. Okay, now I'm at 12 AP, right? Move forward, boom, I'm back at 12 AP. So now I just move five cells for a zero AP cost. And sometimes, for example, let's say I have two bombs on the map. I can just put it so I can get AP back next turn, not necessarily for ruse, but just to do something else. So make sure you always have one uh, latent expo bomb on, on you. So before we move on to the next category, I'm just gonna quickly run you through uh, my my standard like variant setup that I use. So this is it here. I use Fuse, Explo Bomb, Extraction. Extraction is very important for heals. I use Ruse, this is for personal displacement. And I can also use it to protect the bombs very well. Uh, kickback is nice, but I think when just compared to Ruse, Ruse is a lot better because it can allow you to do more than one thing, you know? Uh, Rogri, this is a no contest. I wouldn't really use Musket, especially since I'm not strength. Here I got my bombs, I use crossing, I use cadence. Cadence is important because sometimes it allows me to remove ivory boost, like the D-lock, the, the ivory damage reduction from far away, because with a six range set, I can hit up to 13 range, which is five more than leak pie. I play dirty trick because it allows me for long range swaps. Strategy is interesting, but it's kind of difficult to use, so I try and avoid that one. Stolen goods, as I said, you always need a spell that can help you displace your enemy. Since I don't play imposture, I don't play uh, kickback and I don't play magnet. Here, gluing expo bomb, pulsar. Uh, I keep pulsar instead of gluing expo bomb since I don't really need gluing expo bomb to get my AP since I already, I make sure I always put a bomb at the end of my turn, like whether it be a latent expo bomb or just a reg regular, regular bomb. Uh, I also use machine gun because that helps me uh, keep people away very easily. It's like a long range pushback uh, spell that comes comes in handy. So here you can see over here this this is my basic setup but I'm just gonna tell you two small modifications that I make depending on the classes that I'm against. So one if I'm versus Sakrier I will play a magnetic trap and the reason for this is is as such I'll show you. 
So let's say that that catwalk was me, right? And uh, no, let's say that was the Sacrier, actually. Okay, and this walking bomb is me. So now the Sacrier tries to, to pull me. The thing is, my magnetic trap is invisible to enemies. I can't show you that because obviously I can see my own magnetic trap, but to my opponents, my magnetic trap is invisible. So if I put it then my turns only 2 AP, I can ruin his whole turn if he tries to, to use attraction on me, and then I'll end up wasting his, his whole turn. So I'll show you that right here, how it stops the displacement. Here, see, so it stops me from moving. And since he can't cast attraction twice in a turn, unless he's using like a class item, then I can just have ruined his whole turn using that. Uh, the next variant that I sometimes use is going to be uh, the variant of Vermission, which is a debuff spell, which I'll sometimes use versus uh, versus Fekas or like Masqueraders in Team Kolo, or even versus Sakriers in Team Kolo. The reason this is important is because, as you know, like the, there are some of the classes that can put things that require the most debuffing. For example, if Fekka can do shields and Masqueraders does their shield points and Sacrius do sacrifice on like team, on their allies. So without this debuff spell, which I'll put on, uh, you know, this debuff spell allows me to save the fight sometimes by debuffing lots of shields or like some sacrifice. It hits pretty decently too, you know. Nothing crazy, but it's for 4 AP, so I'm still doing some damage with it. Okay, so now we're in our third category, which is just like a typical play style and like tips I can give I can give for for the game in general uh, as a rogue. So this when it comes down to it, it's going to be like bomb placement and like how you should place yourself relative to your bombs, that sort of thing. So we're going to start with bomb placement. Uh, some of the obvious ones are you don't want to put your bomb in a corner because then you're limited in the ways that you can move it, right? Although with crossing, that's kind of opened up because I can still move my bomb pretty freely, even with my bomb in a corner. Uh, there aren't really many of corners that are like that, but if there were, then obviously now I can only move my bomb in this direction and in no, no other, so you want to avoid corners like that. So when it comes to your bomb placement, obviously you don't want to hide it in a corner, but you do want to hide the line of sight. So if you're fighting against a rogue, like as a rogue, you might forget this because your bombs are yours and like you're not you're not afraid of them, but when you... When you're against a rogue, bombs are, I don't want to say they're scary, but like bombs are an eminent threat. So if I'm hiding a bomb somewhere and it's starting to grow, then my, my enemy is going to see that and start to get nervous because of that bomb. So he doesn't want to get too close and that sort of thing. So even though you don't want to put your bomb in a corner, you do kind of want to hide the, the line of sight. Or for example, what I will do typically is the first bomb that I put, I'll just hide it in the line of sight and like a little bit far away such as, for example, like that one over there. And I'll have that bomb over there, and then I'll kind of come here and bring the fight over here, right? And then in a pinch, if I really need it, I can dirty trick that bomb and bring, back, and bring it back. And that way I put myself away from the fight and I bring my bomb that has been getting boosted uh, sort of away from the fight this whole time. So if I'm keeping the focus of the fight around this area, then they're going to struggle to kill that bomb because otherwise they're going to have to run away and then they're not going to be able to hit me and then they'll take like some some damage and they'll be falling behind in like the, the pace of the fight, right? Now I'm going to try and quickly teach you what's the most, what's the way you can look at the fight and determine uh, the best way to put your your opponent in the bomb line, right? So putting your enemies in bomb lines is pretty much the rogue's the rogue specialty, right? Because uh, as a rogue, that's pretty much your your main purpose, whether it be in a in a solo PvP or a team PvP, because it's the most damage that you can exert in a single turn, and that's putting your enemies in bomb lines. And if that's not something that you're good at doing, then unfortunately you just can't be a good rogue by definition of what a rogue is. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit about how I look at the fight in order to quickly determine what's the best way I can put my enemy in, in the bomb line. So first of all, I'm just going to quickly define what I mean by the best. So for me, the best way to put my enemy in the bomb line is two criteria. One, it has to do the most damage, okay? And two, it has to also use the least amount of powerful spells. So when it comes to powerful spells, I have three. I have Walking Bomb, I have Dirty Trick, and Boom Bomb. These are my three uh, most powerful offensive spells. Obviously I have like last breath, I'm not using it here, but I have last breath 
and I have other offensive spells like Pulsar, but those are not the category I'm talking about. I'm talking about Walking Bomb, Dirty Trick, and uh, Boom Bot. So when it comes to, when I'm talking about the best spell I can use, what I'm talking about, what, what I'm talking about the uh, best way I can put my enemy in the bomb line, what I mean is, what's the way that I can put them in that does the most damage and uses the least amount of spells. So let's say I have Bomb over here. So there are pretty much two criteria I want to look at. Well, three criteria, okay. So one's more of like a, a, a map aspect. So first of all, it's do I want to make a bomb line like this or do I want to make a bomb line like this? So what are factors that can determine this? Obviously, if we're excluding like uh, easiness of, of movement, right? So let's say, let's say I was here. I could just as easily make a bomb line like this as I could like this, right? But for example, let's say there was an obstacle here then I'd be more tempted to make my bomb line like this because now they can't move towards me without without uh, breaking this obstacle or stepping in the line or killing my bomb. So like, let's say that obstacle is there. This bomb is here. Oh, a little bit farther. Okay, there we go. So now my enemy can't move towards me without moving my bomb or killing this or at least wasting some sort of AP to come towards me. So if I'm looking at, a, at any situation, uh, I'm thinking I can either move my opponent into my bomb line or I can move my bomb line to my opponent. So let's say I have a bomb line here like this. Okay, most simple scenario. Either I can move, try and move him towards here, maybe by pulling him this way and then that way somehow, or I can move uh, my bomb line towards him. So if I'm looking at this situation, okay, for me to move him, there would require uh, a lot of effort. Like I would have to, I would have to come behind him and release him there, and then put Boombot and do all that. While on the other hand, like for example, a, a more, I don't know, a, a simpler way to do this would be to use Boombot but keep myself far away, right? Like I could do the same thing here. Just bring this one over here, bring that one over there and just put Boombot and then use my Boombot to push it. So I looked at the two options and quickly determined which one's better for me. And this one's way better because now I'm far from my opponent. I didn't use uh, that many spells to get towards him, so I still have AP left over. Let's say I want to put like two latent explode bombs. Right, whoops, I shouldn't have opened that. Okay, and now next turn, even if he kills both bombs, I can explode these and get four AP back. And now that's because I saved AP to be able to place them because I did the most efficient thing I could. So, uh, I'll just reiterate, it's either I'm moving my bomb line to him, or I'm moving them to my bomb line. Obviously, I could do a combination of both, but typically when it comes down to it, it's more of, it's more of one or the other. So, either I want to move myself to him, and then put like a bomb line, maybe dirty trick away, or I want to bring, push him and bring him to my bomb line. Uh, if I could give one tip for rogues who are just starting out, is don't don't get too dependent on Boombot and Dirty Trick. I know these are powerful spells and make it so much easier because I can just put this and then Boombot this over there and push that over there. But don't get too dependent on them. Try and practice with your different spells because you, you have a lot of mobility without using those two spells that sometimes you don't even realize. So even if I had a bomb over here, I don't need Boombot and Dirty Trick, especially now with Walking Bomb. If I'm looking at this situation, I can easily, for example, explode this bomb, okay, I'm, this is just me, like free. I don't. I don't want to say freestyle, but like I didn't plan this situation, right? Just release everything. Look around. You have so much displacement, so many options to do without using dirty trick, and without using boombot. So don't get too dependent on them, because if you get too dependent on them when you don't have them, you're gonna freeze up and you're not gonna know what to do, and that's how you'll end up losing fights and wasting turns. And now we've finally reached the most fun part of being rogue, which is one shots, because rogues are a damage class, and one shots are the most, the most stylized, the most amazing, the, just the most wonderful display of, of performance that you can do. And as a rogue, that's like an option that's open to you. I'm just going to do a quick demonstration. Obviously, I spent some turn setting this up. 50k HP. And this isn't even the max I can possibly do. But 50k HP, I did 13k damage. There are not many classes that can do that. You know, I a lot of the quest fights, I just win them in three turns, while other classes spend dozens and dozens of turns 
slowly eroding away at whatever whatever strategy the fight requires there's no need for that because as rogue one shots is one of your best techniques so i just want to show you the two main ones that i use in kolo so i want to show you a little bit about how the the setup for that goes so turn one typically i set up my bomb put down another bomb and prepare the boosts right next turn I'll boost up a little bit okay and this is sort of a turn three thing I can I can effectuate on turn two but it's like a turn three one shot because that's where it works uh, most effectively I'll say so it requires one bomb right these other bombs are just gonna help you move around and and get AP so you're gonna want to put this bomb a little bit far back and keep it protected but you're also on your turn two you're gonna want to put some bombs out there um, make sure you have latent expo bombs on you because they can come handy, handy right so what you're gonna want to do is get some AP back rush your enemy and the way this one works you might have seen me do it in a few PvP's is you put your bomb you put your different color bomb powder last breath and this is a 12 AP combo I have some AP left over for example let's say if they have ivory uh, I'll just remove ivory like that and now from 50k HP and just Turn three, I did uh, like 7k damage pretty much. And and at the same time, I put myself far away. It didn't take much effort. Okay. Meanwhile, I could have been doing other things because I don't really use all my AP to boost in one turn. I could be like using Boomba and I still have a lot of spells uh, left over. So that that's the one that I use the most in PvP. How does that work? So uh, first of all, we have to look at the spell Powder. So Powder is a spell that makes a bomb die when it gets killed so that bomb is there if I kill it it explodes cast roguish downpour that means that means it explodes so we also know that when a bomb explodes it will explode any bomb within uh, within a two cell radius of it right so if I explode this bomb this bomb will also explode so now if we put those two things together so now I have two bombs next to each other. This one's powdered. If I kill this bomb, it's going to explode and subsequently explode the one next to it. So when it explodes, the interesting thing is it also gives the whole combo 70% combo damage, which is huge. So the reason that this is uh, a viable combo and the reason it works so well is because bombs take damage in bomb lines that don't match its color, right? So let's say I have these bombs over here. If I put a red bomb in the middle, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to add to the line, right? However, if I add a bomb of a different color, see, it just dies because it just takes it takes the damage of the bomb line and just dies. So the, again, so now the way this combo works is by killing the bomb of a different color that I put in the middle, but I have powder on it. So when it dies, it explodes. It adds 70% combo damage to the whole wall, and it makes the other two bombs explode. So I'll just demonstrate it once more. I set my bomb. I set my different colored bomb. It has to be different colored. I put powder on it. Last breath. So now when I dirty trick, this bomb over here is going to die. Interestingly enough, uh, the bomb that explodes is going to put uh, is going to do the first damage. So if the opponent has ivory. So it's going to, they're going to get hit with a chance, which is the least damage. So it's quite effective too in that sense. So now I'm going to dirty trick. This bomb's going to die, explode. They're going to take the wall damage as well as these two bombs and the, the water bomb as well. So it's going to look like this again. 4.3k HP, 4.34 or whatever. Okay, 4.7. See, that's a lot of damage and not a lot of turns of boosting. So now the second one I'm going to show you uh, requires a few different variants and it's a little bit more tactical. So bear with me, but if you can set this one up, it's quite beautiful to, to uh, see you come into fruition. See you in a second. So now I'm going to show you the second one, uh, the second finisher, which actually utilizes latent explode bombs, interestingly enough. I'm going to demonstrate it real quick. Uh, this is pretty much the setup you would do turn one. Look at it, memorize it. You'll understand in a second how it works. So pretty much I set up, I do this setup, okay? Next turn I'll get AP back with Fuse. 
I'll do a double boost with way down. I'll come back, imposter, powder on this one. Okay, and now I come in here, set down my boom bot. Now what my boom bot's gonna do is attract him over here and then push him there. And what this trap does, uh, it attracts all bombs within a three cell radius. So this bomb is going to end up getting attracted here and then because of what we learned about powder in the, from the previous finisher, this bomb's gonna explode and the whole combo is gonna be redone again. But the thing that's advantageous about this combo compared to the one with the other one with powder is that it allows you to boost your bombs more. So it kind of does more damage more quickly. So this is just turn two, okay, and 10k HP down to 3.7. So just in two turns, I did 6.3. Imagine if I spent a few more turns boosting it, right? Just in two turns, I was able to do this much. Obviously, it's a pouch with 0% resistance, but uh, it's still quite impressive damage, I think. So if you didn't understand it, just rewind it. Uh, watch what I did and you can sort of copy the setup that I did uh, To be able to do quite quite cool finishers in colo if you if you manage to land it So now before we just finish up the video, I'm going to move on to just a few like uh, Small tidbits of information that are slightly random. I didn't really see where to fit them in a category But they're they're relevant enough that I thought they fit in this in this guide I just didn't really know where to fit them specifically. So So here I go so the first thing is you can attract your opponent through roguery. So this might seem strange, but like let's say I roguery over here. Okay, now a lot of people will be like, oh shit, like I messed up my turn, now I can't pull them. Yes, you can. You can pull them. Just try it. This this apparition will disappear and then they'll be pulled. And then uh, that's given that you're not actually there, right? You have to be actually somewhere else and that just has to be like one of your fake doubles. But but you can actually pull in, in that way, which a lot of people seem to not know. So that's the first one. So secondly, even though uh, a bomb, like a bomb of the same color of a line won't take damage, it's still going to be stopped in a bomb line if it's going to pass through it. So release releases by four, right? So one, two, three, normally I should end up over there, but the bomb line is going to stop it and it's going to end up over here, which can allow me to do a finisher. Like let's say he was over here. So now that release allowed me to, to open up a line of three, which allows me to track them there and explode all three in their face, right? So that's the second one. Uh, this third one is that even though I prefer to play Last Breath, you can still play uh, Magnet because obviously you can still play Magnet. But one of the things that Magnet allows you to do is boost without Fuse. Because if you use Fuse, for example, in this situation, if I use Fuse over here, yes, I'll get the AP boost. You can see over here. But I won't get the MP boost because I, for example, I've targeted it on the... Uh, on the green bomb, right? But what magneting bomb, what magnet trap, what magnetic trap, sorry, allows you to do is boost all three because it explodes the bombs around you. So it boosts both of them. So now I got both, and I don't get AP back, but it allows me to 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 keep my boosts on even though I'm using fuse, right? So now the the what are we on the fourth? Okay, so now the fourth one is about the secondary effect of remission, which a lot of people ignore. So if you look at remission, typically remission is used for damage reduction, right? I put remission on my bomb. Okay, my leak pie now hits very little, for example. But what a lot of people don't really look at is, what, what is that? What is that? It says reduces damage by 20, but it says something above that. It says suppression 1. So what is suppression? Suppression is a state that will be cast on any uh, character where that has remission. It, can't, it doesn't count if it's on a bomb. Bombs, it will just protect. But any like living character... If you place uh, remission on them, it'll do the suppression state. And what that does, me, it does is um, if you get hit uh, in close combat while you have suppression on you, the person that hit you will be thrown back. So now I put it on them. Now I'm going to hit them and it's going to throw me back and, it, and it's infinite, right? I come back, hit again, and it'll just keep throwing me back. So the thing is, this can be very useful versus close combat characters because if you put on them on yourselves, like a Sakria, agility Sakria, now he has no choice but to get thrown back every time he hits me because they can only hit in close combat without using like a weapon, for example. So now if he wants to hit me in close combat, he's going to have to get thrown back and that can be very wasteful of MP and like AP. So And it only costs 2, a two AP, so it's very useful. And just a, a little tidbit to that's got something to do with this. So let's say... 
let's say I put my myself in my bombs accidentally, right? Like I do something, they end up in, in bomb line, and then they switch me and they come here to lock me. So now what I can do is uh, do that on them and in one move, run away and pull them in. Because the way it works is the suppression is activated before the pull of the stolen goods, right? So when I hit them, it's going to throw me back and then it's going to pull them. If it pulled them first, there's nowhere for them to go since I'm still here. So they'll just end up staying on that spot. But since it throws me back first, you can see it's going to throw me back and then it's going to pull them. Boom. You saw that, right? You saw how it threw me back and then pulled them. So in one move, I put them and I ran away. And then I can go far, blah, blah, roguery. Get away from them. You know how it goes. And now for the last bit that I'm going to talk about. Just very quickly, if there's a mistake that I've seen, it's that people forget that walking bomb is a bomb, which means it can be treated in that way, right? And it can have the, the movements of a bomb. So let's say this guy's over here. It's still a bomb. I can still dirty trick on it. Okay, people don't seem to notice that. So, so for example, what, what this can allow me to do, for example, I'll do a quick demonstration. Okay, so let's say this is over there. Okay. What I can do is I can put in this bomb, like let's say next turn I know I want to rush him and put him in a bomb line. So what I can do is this, okay, and just put this bomb somewhere over here. And now next turn I can come in and I can dirty trick on this one to complete the bomb line, for example. You just, people just forget that it can be moved and used as a bomb. And for example, now I just made a bomb line of three by using dirty trick on my walking bomb. So it's something that can come in, in that it, it can come in handy. And uh, just remember that walking bomb is also a bomb. And it's the same for mega bomb, which is the variant of, of Boomba. It's also a bomb. So you can still move it the same way you would move a bomb with crossing. You can still kick back, you can still magnet, and you can still dirty trick. So just remember your summons are still technically bombs, and you can treat them as such. And uh, I hope that all the tips that I have given you today can help you be better rogues. Or if you're not even a rogue, I hope it still taught you a little bit about the class and how and how we work as a class. Uh, I'm always been I've always been a fan of rogue. I think I'll always play rogue. And if anyone has any questions, you really, really feel free to ask me because I love answering questions in game. So just message me. My name is here. It's DefyX. And uh, I'll see you next time. I think I have a video coming up, which is me with my new set uh, in Colo. It's going to be a chance AP reduction, a little bit cancer, but I hope you guys will enjoy it. See you next time. Bye-bye.